You're listening to the Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast. You won't believe this, but we've suddenly got cool weather here in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, if you're following us on the vlog and the blog, you'll know that we've been going on about these almost uh, Dubai-type temperatures of 42 and 45 and hiding from the sun. But this evening, you'll hear from the noise in the background, we're sat in a coffee bar in the center of Laktashi, um, and I've got the opportunity in his very, very, very busy schedule. This guy I've been following on Instagram, he's doing the grand tour of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and I think at the end, we're gonna find out he's got another grand tour planned, but we'll see what he says about that uh, a little later on. Zoran Matic is, I think by profession, a journalist, um, he's passionate about uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, he's passionate about tourism, but as I normally say, no matter how much research I do, I always get it wrong. So the first question is, who is Zoran Matic? Zoran Matic is a um, classical junkie, but travel junkie, and uh, I, I want to make uh, people to, to travel as much as possible because uh, traveling, uh, visiting places, enjoying other cultures, uh, knowing about uh, other people, uh, other places, uh, learning history is uh, everything you get on the travel. But uh, for m my opinion is that for the money, best you can is a travel. Best way to use your money is a travel. And uh, when the start Corona pandemic and uh, people can't go in Europe, in other places in the world, uh, need to cancel their vacations, they come to me, my friends who know how much I travel, and start asking me about our country, about Bosnia and Herzegovina, where they can go with uh, friends, where they can go with girl or boy, with, uh, where is something special or, or something nice for the families with children and, and something and I started to knowing that uh, people don't know what we have here I even believe that people um, know what we have but they they don't care they don't want to go they want to go in Sarajevo in Mostar in Trebinje maybe in Bijeljina when they go to Serbia and that's it but uh, when this <laughs> started with Corona I'm uh, I'm knowing that people don't know what we have here. Bosnia and Herzegovina is a country, a very specific country in the hearts of the Balkan. In every, um, uh, how to say, every uh, every uh, history of the Balkan, from the Middle Ages to today, uh, to to our days, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina was a heart. Bosnia and Herzegovina was the middle of the culture. Bosnia and Herzegovina is a rare country where every culture from the east, west, north, south came to the Bosnia and leave their culture. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, you have amazing nature. Uh, this country, small country, have more waterfalls than Italy, France, and Germany together. That's a <laughs> great thing. So, of course, tourism in Bosnia and Herzegovina isn't on the piedestal where we should be, but uh, my opinion is that I, like uh, someone who, who love traveling and love to, to uh, make people travel, need to, to, know, uh, to make people see and enjoy what we have here. In this country, you have uh, three cultures that is dominating Serbs, Catholic or Croats and Muslims Bosniaci uh, that is a dominant but we have uh, Ukraines we have uh, Italian Catholics, we have uh, Russians we have uh, Poland people we have Irish people Celts people so that is uh, that is something that is very 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 rare in, in Europe but not uh, not so uh, yes in in our country. So I think that we are on the start of a long marathon, marathon with the tourism, and we are going step by step. Uh, this is a 
great opportunity to see how one horrible thing like a pandemic is uh, can um, bring to us something new and something beautiful. That is yin and yang uh, situation and that's, that's impressing. When I talk to a lot of foreigners about coming to Bosnia and Herzegovina, the few that I've actually met, because to be honest there aren't all that many as, at the moment, and I say, where do you get your information from? How do you plan uh, your, your visit? What do you want to see? And they always say, well, David, I've got the Brandt Travel Guide. Now, that might be one of the books to go to, but I think that you've just done something that's going to upset Brandt monumentally because you've just spent a lot of time uh, with the, 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 the book 50 locations in, in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. How difficult was it to make such a detailed and informative book? Uh, that's not a problem for me because I'm thinking Brand's guides, uh, Rick Steve's guides, uh, Edward Kerti guides, uh, every uh, book for the countries of most of Europe are made uh, to represent all the beauties of the country. My country didn't have that. And I, want to, to, uh, I wanted to make that. I wanted to make a book that will uh, complete on one place everything that we can uh, that we can call the represent tourist places so I made this book this book have uh, four categories first category is the 50 locations of Bosnia and Herzegovina 50 top locations of Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, that is places who um, who are so represent that we can show it to the world uh, second category have uh, 50 locations that are not recognized in tourism, but they are amazing. There are places that we can uh, show with our history, with our medieval stories, with nature, with everything that is magnificent and untouched. That is something when, uh, when tourism is not on the pedestal that we want, uh, that give us a benefit of untouching nature. So that is the second category. For, uh, third category is something that you see on me on the first, that is gastronomy. Because this is a country uh, where the, I like to say the city Yadu, or, uh, that means that uh, we don't have any occasions in our lives that are not uh, related to the gastronomy. Everything what happened in our lives is related to gastronomy. From happy to the most sad events in our in our day life. So uh, on the four category, uh, last category in the book, I have uh, rock and roll places, places like this, places where you can because I'm coming from the world of rock and roll and subculture rock and roll, and I want to show people places in Beha who, uh, who take care of that culture, where you can um, go on the coffee, where you can sh see some beautiful show or concert, where you can spend some time with your friends. That was my, my idea for that category. The uh, book is now uh, translated to the English. I uh, prepared translations on the Turkish and the Germany, uh, Deutsch, De uh, Deutsch language. And uh, I'm preparing a um, second uh, book that, uh, will, that will have uh, 150 locations in Beha and all those categories I mentioned. So that will be the biggest book on the Beha and uh, I want with that book to make my country proud, to uh, show every beautiful place in this, this magnificent country and put it on the tourist pedestal that we have now. We went to see um, at, the, at, the, at, at the Folklore Festival, the, at the Days of uh, Ethno, in Banja Luka recently, and there was a, a lady from Holland, uh, and she made a film, uh, My Borrowed Heritage, and it was about dance, really. Um, and one of the reactions that I saw from people in the audience, like me, was a lot of local people saying, Do you know, I never knew that. What? I never knew that. I never knew that. And you said earlier on that a lot of people from Bosnia and Herzegovina don't understand the jewel that they live in. Do you find that frustrating? Do you find that sad? Or do you, how do you react when people say, Zoran, I never knew that? Uh, that is not the problem of the people. Uh, something that, that we have bloody times here. 
Bosnia and Herzegovina is a country uh, on ever third generation uh, have bloody times. So in in World War One, in World War Two, in the civil war that was in Bejha, make some separations in the country. So uh, people don't know stuff because of that. We need uh, something in, in uh, Aus uh, Austrian Empire, in, in Habsburg's monarchy, they called 100 years of peace. We need 100 years of peace and, and uh, that generation that will come in 101st year will know everything. That is, uh, that is uh, a payment of our history. And uh, my mission and mission of people who are around me and doing, doing all this story is to uh, make people know what we have here, to respect uh, their culture and respect other, to enjoy and, um, and to live with all our Jews and differences. Because you have people in Banyavuka who don't try Sogandoma, Yaprag, um, they don't try to Wumba. Uh, you have people in Sarajevo who don't know uh, what is uh, Vlaški Sir, what is uh, Sirnica sa Srpskim Kajmakom. Uh, and that is, that is something that is said and we need to make that normally uh, standard for, for our, our citizens and our guests. You've travelled the whole of the country. Uh, I did a bit of research on you, so I know that you've been to everywhere. This is a very rare book, in fact, because not every tourist book has been written by people that have been to everywhere that they're talking about. You have. Oh, now, you've yes. seen all these places. I know that you really want to say to me, David, I love them all equally, but you're only a human being. What is your favourite of all favourite places? In uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina? I have three places. Okay. Uh, National Park Sudjeskamp. That is something that is uh, pretty amazing. The place where you understand to the nature don't belong to us. We belong to nature. That is a, a rare place in the world that you can realize that fact, that, that easy and, and normal fact that we are forgetting. Uh, second place, because I'm a great, uh, very, very loving history and, and history places, I went to the Tito's bunker in Konitz, that was atomic um, bunker for, um, for government of, of ex-Yugoslavia, but today that bunker is uh, made like museum of modern arts, amazing Biennale. And on the third place I will, I will take uh, Wivno horses. Uh, near the city we even on the mountain Sinsar, you have something about uh, 700 wild horses. They are living in that in that nature, and because uh, my wife my wife uh, adore and love horses, what you can see on, on, on <laughs> from the place, uh, we go on the Sinsar and enjoy one day with that horses, and that is unique unique experience in the world. We have you have that on the Sinsar, on the northern Ireland, and in Moldavia. Uh, no other place in the world would have so much wild horses and so uh, so close to the people. You can uh, go one day, be all day with that horses, and and came home with with one incredible adventure. When you've travelled the country, doing book launches like you have here tonight. How, what has the reaction been of most people? Amazing, amazing and incredible. Uh, in uh, I do uh, 53 promotions of the book, and uh, people react uh, great. Uh, they they uh, recognize my idea, and they recognize uh, idea of um, of beautiful places in Beja that we don't know before the pandemic. Uh, now we have uh, people who are traveling uh, every free weekend or free day to some place, enjoy that place, knowing something, something new, something different, and that is that is something that I, I'm proud on that. 
I'm, I'm proud that uh, all around the country I meet beautiful people, they, they compliment me, they, they thanking me for, for my job and they, they recognize all of the jewels, all the beautifuls that we have in Beha. Finally, I read on online and I know that you can't believe everything that you read online. But apparently, you've got another idea about making a book about the former Warsaw Pact countries. Uh, yes, that, that's going to be a massive undertaking, yes, isn't it? That is the original plan. Thank corona, uh, thank, uh, I'm thanking Corona for that, because uh, I'm start with that book. That was a mistake. Uh, because of Corona, I started my writing with my country. That is something that, that is amanet. Uh, that is um, a legacy of Ivo Andrić, and I am I am happy because of that. Um, or that idea uh, will called um, show behind the curtain uh, that will be from Eastern Berlin to the Vladivostok. All countries that we showing uh, people how they look, uh, what they have. That is something amazing. That is combination of so much beautiful in one that you can believe. I make um, most of the Russian. I uh, made Romania. I made uh, Bulgaria. Started Hungary. So that is one one very big project. But before that, I will have a book about Balkan, uh, from Slovenia to Albania all the countries in one book to show uh, people from Croatia, beautiful Macedonia, people from Macedonia to show northern Serbia and something like that. Zoran Matic, thank you very much indeed for giving me your time tonight. Thank, thank you for you. Shine, signing our book. And, f and we can get this now in English in PDF. And where can yes. people find it on the web? Uh, for now, they contact me on the Instagram and Facebook and very soon that will be on Amazon. Okay, so I'll put links to the bottom of the show notes wherever you see this. I now think that you have to go and work now because you have to do a promotion here yeah. in Lactashi. I, um, I hope that you will enjoy in my promotion and uh, I'm sorry for my rather shepherd language in uh, Russian <laughs> films. <laughs> I, I am not, not good in speaking foreign languages, better in, in typing. So. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Thanks for listening to our podcast. If you would like to support us and the production of future episodes, then please consider maybe buying us a coffee. The link to do that is in the show notes for this podcast. Thanks again and see you next time.